with my Aunt Felix's cat Pringles and my official World Power Walking Association leotard. Ooh, the lycra really brings out the color of your cheeks. Uh, thank you, I think. So, Aunt Felix's cat, doing a bit of pet sitting then? Uh, yes, I am. My Aunt Felix is out of town for the next few days at a DNA conference in Phoenix. Wow! Aunt Felix is lecturing on the Helix in Phoenix. Uh, yeah. Well, that's everything on my to snoop list. Oh, wait, 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 wait. One more thing. Why are you singing to the cat? Is it some new workout fad, like, like, sing strolling or something? Oh, oh, I wasn't singing to the cat, Dennis. That would be pointless. Cats can't understand music. Do you, little buddy? No, you don't. You don't comprehend pitch or tone, do you? No, you don't. Yikes. You know, we humans are super unique when it comes to music. Uh We are the only animals on the planet that can understand and appreciate music. Uh Music for humans has been scientifically proven to increase our creative thinking, Uh to push us further when exercising, and even make us do crazy things like the robot and the worm. Uh But when it comes to animals like Mr. Pringles, Uh well, he might as well be listening to radio static. Right. In fact, I was just telling Mindy the other day oh, that... Oh, boy, would you look at the time? I should really be... Uh, wait, what's that rumbling? What? What in the... Ah! Earthquake! Quick to the hysteria hamper! Hysteria hamper? Uh, Dennis, don't you mean the panic room? Panic rooms are for panicking. Hysteria hampers are for hysterics! Huh? And the hamper's only big enough to hold me. Good luck, guys! Oh, wait, Dennis... Uh, huh, that's not an earthquake. Are those cats? Is that? pull out of a giant slide whistle. Installed it last night. Mindy, what in the wow is this thing? It's massive. This, Guy Raz, is my latest, greatest musical invention. Musical invention? What does it do? Well, I could tell you. Uh Uh-oh. Or. Mindy. I could. Or I could... Uh, or I could... I could show you books and charts and a laundry list of parts, but where's the fun? Well, it may not be fun, but it'll be informative. So let's start a new adventure, and I'm very confident you're gonna thank me when we're done. Yeah, that sounds fine, but we both know how this goes. Anything for science. Yep. Next thing I'm wearing crazy clothes. Just this once, how about we try a new approach? Before I wind up as a flamingo or an oversized cockroach. Yeah, that's true, that did happen. Guy Raz, let me show you my incredible contraption. You gotta see this thing in action. It turns the whole world into some. Come on, Mindy, I know you. You love to put me in danger. The 
things start out strange and then get stranger. Then something always goes wrong. Yeah, that's a valid point. But there's nothing like the feeling of the universe revealing all its secrets face to face. That's true. Ride a wow machine or pigeon, you'll get more than just a smidgen of a thrill. So if you really want to know and you want your brain to grow You know I do Mindy, but we've got so much to go through Can't you just tell me? You know I could Guy Raz, but like the song says I'd rather show you Mindy, what in the wow just happened to us? It's my new invention Guy Raz It turns speech into Mindy, that giant saucepan that just fell off the back of your invention scared away my aunt's cat, Pringles. Yeah, along with all of my sleigh cats. Oh, the sleigh cats are back? Well, they were. (sighs) Don't worry, Guy Raz. The sleigh cats are going to take good care of Mr. Pringles. He'll be back before the sun goes down. Well, if you say so, Mindy. (sighs) Now how am I going to get my invention to the zoo? The zoo? Yeah, I wanted to test it out there first, and I was so close. It's just over that hill up there. (sighs) <sighs> Wait, what are you doing right now, Guy Razi? <laughs> Why are you dressed like a stretched out tennis ball? Mindy, I'll have you know that this is an official World Power Walking Association leotard. In bright yellow. Yeah, it brings out the color in my cheeks. Hmm, well in that case, you are perfectly dressed to help me drag this thing up the hill to the zoo. Uh... Oh, come! little buddy uh, okay fine oh yeah all right let me just reattach this acoustic amplifier there we go and now let's get you strapped in strapped in yeah here put this on what is it it's a diaper a diaper mindy i don't need a diaper i've been potty trained for for decades okay well first of all congratulations and second of all it's not for that guy raz see look you just put it on like this okay and then attach one end of it to this cord here okay and then the other end to the music Uh, machine You're all strapped in and ready to help haul this thing up the hill to the zoo. Uh... And now for me. And we're good to go. Mindy, are you sure this is safe? Yes, of course I'm not sure it's safe, Guy Raz. Now, on the count of three, you ready? No! Three, pull! Mindy, remind me again why you made this two-ton musical machine? Well, ever since we saw Armageddon the musical last year, I've been obsessed with show tunes. Guy Raz's and Dolls, Hamilton. So I invented something that would turn life into a musical. A Broadway musical! Uh, uh, okay, a follow-up question here. Mm -hmm. Why are we dragging this thing to the zoo? For the monkeys! I always try out my new material on them. They're my biggest fans. You should have seen me last week in the Monkey Shines Comedy Club. (laughs) So I'm at the grocery store the other day, and I'm wondering, what's the deal with bananas? I mean, I get it. They're appealing. And if you have to share one, you can always split it. I just wish they came in other flavors, you know? Banana flavor? (laughs) Yeah. If those monkeys at the zoo don't love my invention, then no one will. Uh, well, Mindy, uh, I hate to break it to you, but... Mindy! Thank goodness it's you! Is the earthquake over? Hey, Dennis. I've gone through all my rations, and I'm going to have to resort to... uh, Oh, my. What is that? Well, I... It looks like an unnecessarily large contraption rolling on four skateboards and being pulled by an angry tennis ball wearing a diaper. Yep. Oh. Well, what does it do? 
Well, as I was just explaining to Guy Raz here. Oh, Guy, it's you. <laughs> you must be so embarrassed. <sighs> As I was just explaining, it's a device that turns speech into... Uh-oh. Uh, Mindy, is the machine supposed to be making that noise? Yes, of course it's not supposed to be making that noise, Guy Raz. Mindy, I feel funny. <gasps> what in the world? I don't understand what's happening. Start to step into the rhythm and I'm babbling. I should mention your invention causes tension, but my comprehension of this dimension is really dazzling. <laughs> What was that? Ah, sorry, Dennis. It was the machine. It... it was incredible. I have to go work on my music now. Quickly, to the hip-hop hamper. Okay, let's get back to it. I told the monkeys I'd be there by five. <laughs> <sighs> okay, yeah. Mindy, but... Just keep on pulling. <sighs> I don't think these monkeys are going to appreciate your new musical invention as much as you think. How could you say that? Well, Mindy, as it turns out, monkeys don't actually have an appreciation for music. What? I'm sorry, Mindy, but it's true. According to a recent study put out by the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Strokes, monkeys have no understanding of music whatsoever. What? How do you even test something like that? Well, uh, they took a group of monkeys to a music festival, and when they got back to the zoo, they gave them a 40-question survey to complete. They did? No, no, of course not. Mindy monkeys couldn't answer a survey, but what the researchers actually did was to put both a macaque monkey and a human being through a device called an MRI machine. Oh, I know what that is. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and it's a medical device that doctors and some researchers use to see inside of living creatures. Exactly. And in this study, the researchers used this MRI scanner to see how human brains and monkey brains reacted when they heard two different types of sounds, pitch or music, and noise. Some sounds are music, something everyone enjoys. And other sounds are just sounds that we classify as noise. But when we hear music, it just lights up our brain. But noise just annoys us, and we'd rather not hear it again. So how can you tell which sound is which? Well, some have a quality known as musical pitch. Musical pitch? What does that thing do? Well, I could show you, but I'd rather sing you. Sing me! Yes! Mathematical relationships of frequencies are what we hear as a musical note. Oh. And then we put them into patterns we call melodies Like in almost every song that anybody ever wrote Melodies 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 So sounds with pitch can make a song And we all can sing along But with noises you can't make music with them That's not true That's not true? Then what? can noises do? In a pattern, noise can make a rhythm. Like this. Ooh, I like it. That's bonger balls. Let's try putting them together. Music and noise. Music and noise. They can both work together in tandem. Thanks to the patterns and math our brain enjoys. Unless it's totally random. In which case... Yeesh. Anywho, so Guy Raz, let's go back to this study that you were telling me about earlier. So these scientists played two different types of sounds for both the monkeys and the humans, and then what happens? Well, using that scientific device I was talking about before... The MRI machine... Yep. 
they used the MRI machine to scan and monitor a specific part of the brain called the auditory cortex. Ah, the auditory cortex. That's the part of the brain that's responsible for making sense of sounds, right? That's right. So they used the MRI machine to scan that part of the brain, and they found that in humans, when they played noise... Not a whole lot happened in the auditory cortex. But when they played them sounds in pitches or music... Their auditory cortex lit up like a Christmas tree of activity. Wow. Okay, so that's the humans, but what about the monkeys? Well, with the monkeys, when they played them noise... They got a similar response to when they played noise for the humans. Uh Uh-huh. The difference is, when they played the monkeys the pitches or music, nothing happened. Which means that the monkeys were not able to tell the difference between straight-up noise and a musical note. Hey, who you calling a monkey? (gasps) Grandma G-Force! Did somebody call? Grandma G-Force, what are you doing out and about at this hour? Well, I don't think that's any of your beeswax, Mr. Rozzy. Oh, oh, sorry. Because it's my beeswax. I've been beekeeping down at the local community center. You mean that was until all the bees went a-missing? Now we gotta go find them again. It's It's Thomas Thomas Fingerling. Fingerling! That's right. Now, unless you two youngsters have seen some bees buzzing around here, then, uh, what did you... Uh, say, what you got here? What is this gigantic gizmo? Hey, what's that noise? Oh, man, not again! Oh, jeez, I've lost all the bees. They flew away on a breeze. Now I'm blue as a cheese. Uh. <laughs> what in the world wide web just happened? Why am I suddenly singing sad sentimental country songs like a young Taylor Swift? Hashtag Swifty for life. Oh, it's my new invention, Mr. Fingerling. It turns speech into song. Uh, speech to song, eh? Can it also find lost bees? Uh, no. Uh, why? Oh, uh, no reason. Come on, G-Force. If that thing ain't for finding bees, we best keep a looking. Get me my beekeeper suit. I'll tell those little stingers what, what. Let me at them. Bye, Grandma G-Force. Bye, Thomas Fingerling. Come on, Guy Raz. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, Mindy. We're almost there. One last push. So, Guy Raz, you were just telling me about how my new invention is completely useless? Uh, Not exactly, Mindy. I'm just saying I think you have the wrong test audience. What do you mean? Well, although monkeys might not be able to tell the difference between a piece of music and TV static, humans are capable of incredible sound recognition and appreciation. Yeah, but why is that, Guy Raz? I mean, why aren't monkeys able to understand music like we do? I mean, we're similar in a bunch of other ways. We're both social animals. We're both able to read each other's faces. We both throw poop at each other when we get mad. Uh... How come monkeys can't just appreciate my musical mastery machine? Well, Mindy, those same reasons researchers have hypothesized that it might be because we humans are so good at talking. Talking? Yeah. Over the years, as a species, we've learned to communicate with each other by talking. And we use pitch and tone in our speech to convey different things like... Like how when we're sad, we might sound flat and speak in a lower tone. Yeah. And when we're happy, we speak in a high-pitched, chirpy voice. 
Exactly. And it's that kind of fine tuning and that ability to detect slight changes in pitch and tone in people's voices that's been developed over tens of thousands of years. And that's made us humans super sensitive to different notes and pitches. And in turn, it made us humans music aficionados. Correctamundo. Huh. Well, looks like as far as testing out my new musical machine, the monkeys are out and I'm going to need some new test subjects of the human variety. Well, lucky for you, Mindy, we've got a bunch of wonderful friends who are A, human beings, and B, would love to come see an original and fully spontaneous Broadway musical by yours truly. Hey, yeah, we can get Grandma G-Force, Thomas Fingerling. Ahem. Dennis? I'll invite the whole neighborhood. It'll be like a big musical party. And I bet you could still hold it at the zoo, Mindy. I know the zookeeper. He's a huge Sondheim fan. You know the zookeeper? Of course. Lou Reaper is my badminton partner. We play every Wednesday and sometimes even have... Uh, hold the phone, Guy Raz. Lou Reaper, the zookeeper? Really? Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Uh, Mindy... What's happening? Ah, the parking brake broke! The skateboards are skating! Oh, oh no, Mindy, the machine's rolling back down the hill! Um, uh, uh, a gangway! Gangway! Coming, coming through! through. This thing that are rolling out of control! Who knows who we might bump into? into. Grandma G-Force, watch, watch out! out. Let me at that back of the moats! These fish are waiting. I'd find that gadget if I could catch it, but it's accelerating. Oh, she's right. It's picking up speed. Gangway. Is that you? Yes, I could have told you so at the start of the show. It always ends in disaster. Now I better rush before I get crushed. Eh, is it going even faster? Where do? He's running. Does I can tell you one thing. What? It'll be in the key of A flat something. A flat something. We're all good, Mindy. Yeah, I bet your sing song and thing in my bar don't look so good, though. Sorry about your machine, Mindy. It had so much left to give. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mindy. I think your musical machine might still be working. Well, only one way to find out. Hey! Oh, no. Oh. It's the big finale. It means the show's almost done. But not quite until we sing this finale. Then we gotta run. Cause when you sing a finale, you know it's the very last song. It's getting late, so shall we? Just get moving along. This is how. Musical and say goodbye to our friends and give the whole team a hand. A special thanks to the band. It all went as planned. We're just like Lin Manuel Miranda. Who's that? Zoodling. This is a classic Broadway finale. No synthesizers or rap. And while it's not a rule, if we're feeling old school, even 
throw is the top. How's about this? Wow, Thomas Fingerling, who knew? <laughs> My tap is on point. Grandma G Force, watch and learn, kid. Go G Force, go G Force. It's your birthday. No, it's not. Dennis, leave this to me. Jazz hand. Shuffle ball change. Shuffle ball change. Six, seven, eight. Big finish. We're almost done with the finale. Then we're out of time. Then we'll move back to Cali. Wait, we're from Cali? Hey, we needed a rhyme. The orchestra's on the last page of the score. The virtual audience is headed for the virtual Hi, Mindy. Hi, Guy Ross. My name is Max, and I live in Woodenville, Washington. Here's my wow in the world. Once the emperor penguin egg has been laid, it has to sit on the parents' feet for more than two months to keep from freezing. Say hi to everybody. P.S. I love your show so much. Hi, Mindy and Guy Ross. My name is Madeline. I am from Torrington, Connecticut, and my wow in the world is that the sun's core is 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. I love your show. Say hi to Reggie, Dennis, hi. Grandma G-Force, oh. and Thomas Fingerling. Sure. Bye. Hi, Mindy and Garage. My name is Brock, and my name is Ralph. We are from Hampton, Connecticut. Our well in the world is that cheetahs can reach up to 60 miles an hour in just three seconds. Love your show. Say hi to Lindy for you. <laughs> I'm Lindy and Guy Ross. My name is Lena, and I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. My well in the world is that you yawn not just because you're tired, but because you need more oxygen. Say hi to Reggie for me. <laughs> Bye. Hi, my name is Sophia. I live in Corona, California. My wow is that girls have more taste buds than boys do. Bye, Mindy. Bye, Guy Raz. I love Reggie. He's the best. Hi, my name is Jessero, and I'm from San Francisco. My wow in the world is that hot water turns into ice faster than cold water. And one more thing. Dennis, I want you to answer this riddle. Okay, let's hear it. If you give me a snack, I live. But if you give me a drink, I die. What am I? Okay, uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> Reggie, no, it can't be that. Uh, it's gotta be, uh, oh, uh, what is it? Okay, the answer was... Wait, 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 don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Don't... Fire. Oh, fire. Fire, okay, of course. You were right, Reggie, as usual. End of messages. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this week on Wow in the World. And to keep the wow rolling, check out this week's scientific conversation starters at our website, wowintheworld.com. And grown-ups, there you can find more info on how your kids can become members of the World Organization of Wowzers, shop our wow shop, upload photos and videos to us, and check dates for our upcoming live events. 
That's wowintheworld.com. Our show is produced by Jed Anderson. Who provides the bells, whistles, and silly characters. Say hello, Jed. Hello. Our show is written by me, Guy Raz, and Thomas Van Kalken, who also provides silly characters. Tom? Hello there. All of the original songs in this episode performed by Guy and Mindy were written and composed by Tim Burns. Thanks also to Jessica Bodie, Anna Zagorski, Rebecca Caban, Kit Ballinger, and Alex Curley. Meredith Halpern-Ranzer powers the wow at Tinkercast. Our theme song was composed and performed by The Pop-Ups. For more on their three-time Grammy-nominated all-ages music, find them at thepopups.com. And grown-ups, you can follow Wow in the World on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Wow in the World. And our email address is hello at wowintheworld.com. And if you're a kid with a big wow to share with us, call us at 1-888-7-WOW-WOW for a chance to be featured at the end of the show. Also, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to Wow in the World on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, leave us a few stars, a review, or just tell a friend about the show. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, keep keep on wowing. wowing. Jinx! Made by Tinkercast and set to you by Wondery.